What you're about to hear, you have never heard before. I think maybe two other people have had a similar experience, but this is not a dream. This is not a vision. This is an encounter and visitation of Jesus Christ and a literal visit to hell. When I was 24 years old, all of a sudden there was quiet, like a stillness or something while I was sitting on my couch. Is it, I don't know how to explain it. Then all of a sudden, Jesus Christ walked through my door. He created matter. He doesn't have to open doors. He walked up to me and said, son, very important word, son, come with me. His face was like the brightness of the sun, and I was as were dead. John was right. That's how it is. Only way you can explain it. His garments were white, like, like perfect white. My spirit knew, as I knew, my consciousness knew, and I knew that this was Jesus Christ. My spirit obeyed when he said, come. Spirit said, this is him. He is God. <laughs> right out of my mouth, making it obvious that this wasn't a vision. And I knew this wasn't a dream, so it's not a dream. It's not a vision. This is literally, boom, this is what happened. Sorry, that's what happened. We went through the earth. I could see the layers of it. He's on my right-hand side. As we go to the earth, I see the center of the earth, and it's a pit. And it's got more to it, but that's what I'm talking about here. It's a pit. And in there, there's people that were in my church, and they were in hell. Let's stop. He that hears out, he that judges a matter before he hears the whole thing is folly. Listen to what I have to say. No matter how educated or intelligent you are, listen to me. I was a Calvinist. I was a dean at Everlasting Chip Ministries, an accredited school where you get your bachelor's, master's degree. I taught Greek. I knew as I studied Greek that the Greek was refuting Calvinism. I knew that men who taught it had to twist it because I knew that the word believeth is a present tense imperative verb. You can't connect anything else in the scripture, such as shall and everlasting life, without connecting it in conjuncture to the word believe it. But people twist the word as scripture says. For every text, there must be a context or, or it is a pretext. In my life, I've tried to dumb down my intelligence because I've scared people by my intelligence. So I, I practice as being as stupid as possible a lot of times in my life as I've got older because I used to just, I was too smart. I've learned that's not even wisdom now as an older person because the word wisdom means wit. So I don't try to dumb down things any longer. I'm just telling you like it is. I saw people in my own church telling, saying to me, Pastor John, you told us we couldn't lose our salvation. Now, this is for eternity. I'm going to hear this. There's no place to go. There's no place to run. It's not a TV. You can't turn it off. Your brain doesn't shut it down. You can't fall asleep. You're forever awake. You fully, completely understand it because even though you're in a spirit, you completely can hear and see. You're there. You can't deny it. Then I, in the, in the middle of this, I'm put into a tomb. The Lord tells me, son, if you continue to believe what you believe and preach it, this is going to be your punishment. And I'm put into this tomb. And in this tomb, I see like, uh, like a spider. I see like a monkey. And I, and, I, and I see a spider, a monkey, and I see a rat. And I'm in this tomb and I can hear billions of voices, but I can ascertain and understand them. Now, your frontal cortex, where you make your decisions and your cognitive facilities, right? 
That's where it all happens. It can't process that. Your ears can't assimilate and process all of that. But when you're out of your body, you can. So we can handle, we sometimes maybe get in getting insulted or condemned by people or accused, and it hurts. But how about billions of voices cursing you, jeering you, making fun of you, tormenting you, lying to you, messing with your mind, millions of them, hearing each one of them, understanding each one of them. Each one of those, boom, shoots in there, boom, hits you deep inside your heart deep inside your spirit. It hits you, but you can't escape it. It's for eternity. There's no reprieve. You've done the deed. You're there. You lied. You preached a false gospel. You told people they were eternally secure, though you knew as a person who studied Greek and Hebrew, it wasn't feasible. You twisted it because you didn't want to hear the truth, and now you're there, and there's no way out. You can't say, God, I repent now. I'm sorry. I didn't know because everybody knows the truth. You're just twisting the truth. You're twisting it. You can become to a point where strong delusion causes you actually to believe the lie. But I wasn't there. I hadn't seared my conscience. So I hadn't gone over like a lot of Calvinists have gone over. They've seared their consciences. And outside of a supernatural miracle, they will never, ever make it to heaven because they've seared their conscience. They simply believe their brains are cooked. That, that, that pickle's been left in pickle juice too long. And now it, it's got the, the bitter taste of vinegar. Yeah, I believe a person can probably repent till the time they're gone, but it's going to be hard. I, I believed in Calvinism, but anytime I studied in Greek and Hebrew, it, I knew that it, 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 you really intellectually couldn't do that. I knew you had to be basically uh, illiterate with the Greek to really be a Calvinist or just a plain liar. But I still believed in Calvinism anyways. So I'm in hell. I see the lake of fire. Now, do I see fire? No. You say, oh, wait a second. Oh, no. Oh, I saw outer darkness. In outer darkness, there was a lake. I knew it was a lake. I could see that it was a lake. And people were bobbing up and down in this lake, the people that I had deceived, in the lake of fire. And they were crying out, Pastor John, you deceived us. They were in this lake, but there was outer darkness. Remember, hell is outer darkness. The worst thing in the world is darkness. There, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. The absence of light is darkness. God isn't going to be there. He's not showing up. There's complete darkness there. Talk about claustrophobia. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to run. Complete darkness in flames, being burned alive. No ability to change. Repent. I'm sorry. Fix it. This is it forever tormented demons cursing you lying to you you're there and you're there because you've been a liar you're there because you're a backslider or you're 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 a lukewarm christian you're there because you're a false prophet and you told people that you what you knew could not be taught intelligently articulately from the greek you taught it anyways and you're a liar and you knew it and now god says it doesn't matter nobody will con me nobody can can lie to me and get away with it you're here for eternity. If you believe in Calvinism, if you believe you can be lukewarm or you can be a backslider, make it into heaven, you better run. You better run because you won't be able to hide in any rock when Christ comes in the fullness of his glory. And I've had visions of him coming back. You'll not be able to hide. You're not going to have a discussion. It's over. It's over. Run from Calvinism. Run from sin. Run to God, repent, and keep on repenting. Call and keep on calling. Seek and keep on seeking. God bless you.